Hey guys, welcome back. This week I'm breaking down 10 Photoshop effects in under 2 minutes. Let's get started. Hey guys, my name's Om. If you're new around here, I make videos every Monday at 12 o'clock. So hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as I promise you, you won't be disappointed. While Photoshop loads, can I just say, I don't really like this new 90s reject updated thumbnail and intro. I really like their old interesting ones. But while you're here, for the last two weeks I've made two videos on fundamentals of motion graphics where you could create a spinning house. Now the first one did really well but the second one crashed and burned. You guys clearly didn't like the motion graphic stuff so I've gone back, come back with this Photoshop one. But I will be getting back to them slowly so I'll be implementing them every now and again. So, But majority of that will be on Instagram so keep an eye out for that. So let's set a timer for under two minutes and let's go. Now everyone knows about content aware fill and it works well sometimes but sometimes it doesn't do the job like here where it brings back the Disney Plus logo. Now there's a quicker and easier way to do it. All you need to do is click on the spot heel brush tool here then paint over what you want to get rid of. Photoshop will do the job and it's gone just like that. Number two. How to turn everything black and white but bring back woody in colour. Duplicate the layer and go to Image, Adjustment, Hue and Saturate or shortcut key Command Control U. And then bring the saturation down and use the eraser tool to bring back anything in colour. Now, this is a good idea but the pen tool would be much better which I'll show you on the next step in number 3. Which is how to blur the background but keep woody in focus. Duplicate the layer and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Change the amount of blur to what you'd prefer. I went with 4.6 and hit OK. Then use the pen tool to draw around Woody and any holes that he might have like in his arms here. Click on the Path tab, double click the Path layer to close it off and rename if you want. From there, right click and make Path Selection. Before hitting OK, I'm going to make the feather a 2 and then go back into the layer and click on this mask button here. Initially, this will only blur Woody out. So click on the mask layer and press command Control i to invert it. And there you go. On to number four. This is where using the pen to create an outline of Woody comes in handy. Duplicate the layer and mask off just Woody. Once you have that, double click on the layer to bring up the layer styles window. For this, we'll need two strokes. Next to the stroke tab, there's a plus button. Add another one. Turn them both on and in the first stroke, change the position from inside to outside. Change the size to 24 and keep the color as black for now. On stroke 2, change the size to 32. Again, position to outside. I'm going to change the fill type to gradient. Choose the color you want and change the angle to 0 degrees and hit OK. You'll get this big black outline stroke, which you may not want. So go back in and change the settings to get something that you'd prefer. This is how all YouTubers bring in the white outline on their thumbnails. On to number 5. How to create this RGB effect. Start by duplicating your layer three times. So we have the original, one for red, one for green and one for blue. Double click the layer to bring in the layer style window. Under advanced blending and channels, tick the color you want to keep. For the first layer, I'm choosing green. Once you click OK, move to the left three times. Do the same for blue and move up three times and do the same for red and move right three times. And you get this sort of effect. On to six. Changing eye colour. Now, there's two ways of doing it. The first way is, choose your colour and select the brush tool. Make sure your hardness is at 100% and create a new layer and colour in the eye. From there, change the blend mode to multi multiply and erase any colour here to bring back any detail you want. Now, this is really good, but there's a better way. Again, use the pen tool to draw a mask around the eye. Click on the path tool and close the path off. Then make the selection. From there, hit Command Control U and change the hue and change the hue color to variations where you can adjust the saturation and brightness accordingly. This way you don't have to bring back any detail as it'll automatically do it. And then on to number seven. This is how to get the two-tone effect that many companies like Spotify use. Click on the adjustment tab. From there, click on this button, which is the gradient map. 
and click on the gradient color. This will bring up the gradient editor window. From there, click on the color you'd like to start with. With I'm going with a dark purplish color. Then click on the other end of the gradient tool here. And I'm going to change this to a light green color and hit OK. And that's how simple two tone imaging is. On to number eight. This is how to bring in colorful background effects. Start by creating a new layer. Click on filter, stylize and extrude. Change the size to 50 and the depth to 30 and hit OK. And you'll get this block effect. Or if you prefer a different background, create a new layer. Pick the, co the two colors you'd like the layer to be. I'm going black and blue. First, go to Filter, Render and Clouds. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur and change the blur to 7. Then go back up to Filter, Pixelate, Crystallize. Change the cell size to 300 and it's done. Number 9. This is how we move things into the center pretty easily. First, select the image you want to move into center. Make sure you've selected the Direction tool and at the top here, click the Center button and it's done. On to the final one, number 10. This is how you change anything from a daytime scene to a nighttime scene, or in the case of this, to a kid's movie into a horror movie. Click on the adjustment layer at the bottom of the tool here, and then click on Color Lookup. From there, under 3D LUT file, select foggynight.3dl, and it's that simple. Okay, so... I kind of went over two minutes, I think by another two minutes, but I had a lot to get in. I hope you found this informative. I'm doing some breakdowns of shooting, motion graphics, VFX, editing, all that on my Instagram. So have a look there. Hit the like button to let me know you like this video. Hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, stay inspired.